The trolls are out, man! The trolls! Keep trolling, 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 trolling! Yeah! What? Come on. Fred Durst fans? No? Y'all? Y'all ain't down with the chocolate starfish and the hot dog flavored water? Alright, whatever. We're not talking about that right now. We're talking about the trolls, baby! People are trolling Holton Wise. Now, people have been trolling Holton Wise for a very long time, but this particular troll that we're going to be talking about today came up with a great question. I love, you know, I get this question and I've answered it, uh, you know, in the middle of other content, right? Like other shows. Like I'll be in the middle of like, you know, doing an investment properties for sale show or an MLS search and analysis show, and I'll, I'll be talking about things like this to my clients, but I've never actually. Uh, made a standalone video uh, to address this topic, right? So I think it'd be good, right? You know, people see the Tenants from Hell show and they see all the bad, horrible stuff and then we get all the questions like, why do you have so many bad tenants? Maybe it's your fault. Why are you evicted so many people? This, that, and the other, right? Like, why are we evicting so many people? Why are we having... Uh, to deal with so many terrible tenants. Is this common? Is this going to happen if I should invest in real estate utilizing Holton Wise? Do we only rent to junkies and crackheads, right? These are all great questions. Obviously, uh, the dude who was asking him, he's kind of a troll, but that's cool uh, because his trolling behavior uh, is really going to open up a great conversation about property management, tenant screening, and how Holton Wise operates, man. So let's uh, dive into it. Welcome to the show, folks. I am James Wise, and of course, I am here to unpack real estate topics, to answer your questions, to provide some insight, to let y'all know what's going on in the business, right? Myself, I've been in the game a long time. I run a $75 million portfolio, so I've got a lot of tenants, and we've evicted a lot of tenants, right? And oftentimes... <clears throat> Uh, stuff like that will bring out the trolls, of course, right? Uh, and recently, we just dropped this video, okay? It's a cool one, right? Jobless renter can't figure out why he got evicted, right? It's Tennis from Hell 81. We're talking about this guy, you know, and that was a little feisty, little feisty video, right? But that was a really uh, impactful video, I feel like, because it's really providing people an insight uh, into what landlords are dealing with. Steve, hit them up with a little... Sneak peek. My landlord is a slumlord because I can't pay the rent. What is a family to do? How about get a fucking job, Troy? Why don't you get a fucking job, you fucking pussy? So obviously that video, right, it's going to elicit a lot of reactions, right? And we're going to get reactions all the way on this side of the spectrum, all the way on this side, right? You have two opposing forces, man. It's like two magnets trying to stick together, right? You got the landlords, the property owners, the property managers on this side. And on this side, you got the tenants, the liberals, the wokies, the lefties, the tidy whitey pants wearing i don't know i said tidy whitey i don't know if they wear tidy whiteys but they do wear skinny jeans and they drink extra large cafe mocha latte vente motherfuckers and also fuck them but uh it's good it creates discussion and that's what we're here for right we're trying to get some discussion trying to create some transparency into the industry right uh so we have a lot of stuff out there that uh, does that right and then you get the people uh you know that leave a lot of comments, right? Not every comment on Holton Wise TV is uh, in support of your boy Jay Wise and uh, the Holton Wise business. And uh, this particular guy, I am very happy that he uh, presented these questions to us because this is great. We're gonna do. We're gonna really unpack this man. His name is Anon Spacebar Amus. That was super clever, bro. Anyway, he said. Do you even screen tenants? Every trap house in Cleveland has Holton Wise on it. Half of your properties are crack houses rented to junkies. You have quite a few stories of tenants from hell. You're damn right we do, folks. Check out the tenants from hell story. If you don't believe me, if you don't believe Anonymous, check out this right now. Okay, here's a notice to evict. Okay. What? Here's your notice for... Put the knife down right now or I'm gonna f Put your knife down. Put the f knife down. Put the knife down right now. Put the knife down right now. How did I know that I'm not an intruder? Oh, boy. 
that's a little wild, right? A little wild, right? But guess what, man? That's just the tip of the iceberg, dude. It gets really freaky on the Tennis from Hell show. You know what? Steve, hit these people with another 45 seconds. Bailiff department, is anybody home? If you're home, could you please come to the door and talk to me for a second? Hurry up, man. Hello? Do you have a mouth? Do you know how to talk? Can you answer the question? If I knew, if I knew living here was gonna be like this, I would've moved here. Cause they act like they run this mother hill. You scared yet? Are you like, whoa? What in the hell's going on here? What's up with this? Real estate's wild. Why are these people having all this craziness, right? So back to Anonymous here. Do you even screen your tenants? Every trap house in Cleveland has Holton Wise on it. Half of your properties are crack houses rented to junkies. You have quite a few stories of tenants from hell. At some point, you have to look inward. How do all these scumbag life losers, as you like to call them, keep ending up in your properties? Great question, Anonymous. Anonymous did a little bit more trolling. This, this dude, this cat, uh, Slim Dan, that's his... Uh, YouTube handle there. Uh, did anyone run a background check, man? And then Anonymous. Nah, he clearly doesn't do background checks. Half of his properties are drug houses. Look at all the tenants from hell he has. Anyone doing thorough background checks wouldn't encounter nearly half of the bad tenants his company has. Now, first of all, Anonymous, I feel like you're kind of a cunt, but you're bringing up great stuff. Uh, but before we talk about the great stuff you're bringing up, let's talk about cunts for a second. Like, you're kind of cunty, but you know who's, like, really cunty? Uh, this chick Claire, dude. Like, what a cunt you are, Claire. Uh, some guy, this is on Facebook. The video is being shared in a group, and he's, like, talking about me. Uh, what a horrible man and horrible channel. Why is he shouting so much, right? <laughs> and then... <laughs> Which is fine. That's like a that's a reasonable criticism, okay? But then Claire busts in here. Ed, ditto. I blocked out their names, obviously, folks, and their pictures. I don't want you harassing them in the real life. I mean, this. I looked at, you know, she's a normal, well, not normal in my opinion, but she's like a regular person. Don't be going out there and harassing her, so I'm blocking it all out. But ditto. I wanted to give up as soon as he used the word dude. Preserved for another 10 seconds. Come on, Claire. Really? You're upset that I used the word dude? Claire, don't be such a stick in the mud. Claire, really? Your husband called. He's sick of eating meatloaf and doing missionary every night. Have a little fun, okay? Come on. Anyway, back to Anonymous, okay? So, <clears throat> Anonymous, brother, thank you for bringing these up, okay? These are great questions, folks. First thing and, and part of this is going to encompass what we do at Holton Wise and part of this is going to encompass the real estate industry right uh, so first of all uh, just to give you all some hardcore data some super data Holton Wise we run a massive portfolio it's like a 75 million dollar portfolio right uh, thousands of tenants okay uh, so by the sheer volume uh, of the size of our portfolio of course you're going to see a large uh, amount of stories and issues, right? Uh, so that show, that was the most recent uh, Tennis from Hell show we've done, and that was episode 81, right? So we've done 81 stories uh, on bad tenants, okay? But we have thousands, uh, thousands of tenants and stuff. So it's actually the amount of, of bad tenants Holton Wise deals with uh, is actually the minority. It's a very small amount, right? Uh, we don't, like, not all tenants are going to be horrible folks, uh, but guess what? It's just like when you you watch the news, right? You watch a little news channel five, little Fox Eight, whatever you're doing. If it bleeds, it leads, y'all. They don't run like normal stories on the news, like in other news, middle aged man went to work, did his job, came home, ate dinner with his wife and kids, watched a little Grey's Anatomy, and then went to bed. That's not a story, man. No, of course. It's got to be weird stuff, right? You got to get the ratings, man. If it bleeds, it leads. So, like, you know, how many of you guys are going to watch if I'm just like, hey, man, this is Billy. Billy's a tenant at our duplex. Billy paid his rent this month. And uh, we put it in the computer, and then uh, that was it. We... Uh, we had a little pizza party on Thursday at the office. 
My bro Steve, he went a little hard with the garlic sticks. You know what I mean? That's not a story. <coughs> it's not a story, y'all. It's boring. It's not fun. It's not exciting. You guys like to hear the stuff that really pops out at you. So, you know, by design, right, that show is only going to highlight the bad stuff, right? But that's what you want to know about. But the vast majority uh, of the tenants we deal with, folks, are actually uh, good people. They're not, they're not, they're not a problem. <coughs> I mean, if you watch <coughs> some of my other shows, like the MLS Search Analysis show, the Investment Properties for Sale show, where I actually teach investors uh, and help investors actually invest in real estate, we go over this stuff at length, right? But the Tenants from Hell show, it's got a different uh, objective, and it's got a little bit different of an audience, right? So you are going to see the worst in the worst, okay? The worst of the worst. And just by the, the sheer size of the Holton Wise portfolio, uh, there will be a larger amount of problems just because there's a larger amount of tenants, right? It's like uh, companies like Verizon, right? By all uh, accounts, Verizon is actually, in my opinion, the best cell phone company there is. This show is not sponsored by Verizon, although it would be cool if it was. Verizon, hit your boy up. Uh, but just beside, like, based on the size of Verizon, like if you Google Verizon complaints, right, how many are you going to find? Like a fucking ton of them because they got millions and millions and millions and millions uh, of customers, right? So they're going to have a lot more complaints than like the local donut shop down the street from your house, right, that, uh, you know, doesn't have that, right? So they don't have the footprint. So that's, that's one reason, but that's not even really uh, the big reason uh, or the most prevalent reason. Uh, the second reason, and this uh, relates specifically to the Holton Wise company and the Holton Wise business model and what it is we actually do, which anonymous, uh, it is clear to me uh, that in your infinite wisdom, you are not actually aware of what this business really does. Uh, so, allow me to let you know, brother. What Holton Wise does, right, is we take over distressed properties, right? That is, at its core, what we do, right? So, uh, I do agree with you when you say something uh, <clears throat> like this. What would you say? You said, Anyone doing thorough background checks wouldn't encounter nearly half of the bad tenants his company has. That's a great point, and you're right. You are 100% right. As a matter of fact, I teach tenant screening here on Holton Wise TV all the time. I'll link some tenant screening videos below. When, uh, no, you know what? No, no, Steve, hit them up with a couple of, couple of good tenant screening tips. I know how to screen tenants, folks. I screen the shit out of tenants. Any tenant screening video I ever do is probably going to have something about this, and that is not renting to people who have previously been evicted. Do group showings, application fees, unit holding fees. Make a set of criteria and stick to it. So I know how to screen tenants, right? As you can see, oftentimes people say I screen too hard, right? Uh, but you are right. If you are actually properly screening tenants, you won't run into as many bad apples, right? And that's the thing. That's where you're confused by what Holton Wise actually does. You see, Holton Wise is in the business of taking over distressed properties, taking over properties from problem landlords. You get a mom and pop landlord, they run into horrible, horrible tenants, they don't know how to deal with them, and then they contact Holton Wise to do business. Whether they're like, hey, Holton Wise, oh my God, my tenant's horrible, I don't know what to do, I can't deal with this, real estate investing is very hard, because it is, folks. And then we come in, we then begin managing that property for those people, and then we deal with the tenants, right? We right the ship, right? They're running with chaos, they call us the pros, we come in and we start kicking motherfuckers out, right? Another thing that happens, same scenario, those people would call Holton Wise and they're like, I'm just done, get me out of this. And Holton Wise would then either buy the property or sell the property on the investment properties for sale show to all of the investors out there who work with Holton Wise, right? And investors love buying distressed assets, folks, because when you're a real estate investor, you make money 
by solving other people's real estate problems. We target tired landlords. We look for landlords who have just been beaten down by these horrible, savage animals in their properties, and they either want to hire my company to correct that on their behalf, or they want to sell their properties, right? That's how my company generates revenue, right? We solve that problem. So, like, if you're a pizza shop, what do you want? You want people who are hungry because you could solve that problem for them and get paid to do it, right? You're hungry. Here's a fresh pie, dog. 20 bucks. You know what I'm saying? So, similar thing. So, with that said, I would argue that probably like 90 to 95% of the tenants from hell stories you see uh, are going to be from tenants that were not actually placed and screened by Holton Wise, okay? Uh, they're oftentimes tenants uh, who were placed and screened and then inherited. That problem became Holton Wise's problem because that's how Holton Wise makes money. We solve real estate problems, right? You say that my sign and you see the Holton Wise name on all these houses in Cleveland, and you do because we're the biggest name in that market, right? We're the biggest name in town. If you guys, you know, people watching the show from other markets, right? We get a lot of out-of-state investors in the Cleveland market. If y'all fly into Cleveland, you drive around town, you're going to see Holton Wise trucks all over the place. You're going to see Holton Wise signs all over the place. Yeah, we're the biggest name in town. And... If all the tenants we were placing in our properties, we weren't actually screening them and we didn't know how to do a background check and we weren't as smart as some jerk off named Anonymous <laughs> on YouTube, do you think we would have a $75 million portfolio, Anonymous? Do you think I got my name on all these properties as you drive around town? Because I'm just some dipshit who can't even figure out the most basic thing of professional property management, which is tenant screening. If I was doing that, bro, I wouldn't be making any money, would I? If I don't make any money, how am I going to buy all these properties? I'm sure all the Wokies and the leftists out there, if they're still watching the show, they're like, Well, obviously, you're a horrible capitalistic jerk. It's institutional racism. You probably inherited all these tenants because your ancestors owned a tobacco plantation. Ah, that's probably what you're all thinking. No, no, that's not wrong. Or that's not right. That would be wrong. Hold lies, self-made company. As a matter of fact, and we've talked about this before, uh, I am actually from a C-grade neighborhood, the old Brooklyn area, right? So when you guys uh, see a lot of the properties on the show, I actually grew up there, right? So didn't have any money. So we had to make money uh, ourselves by making smart business decisions and, like, being good at real estate. So uh, the myth that we do not screen our tenants is uh, inherently wrong and incorrect, and anybody with half a fucking brain should know that because it'd be really fucking impossible to grow to the biggest while doing everything wrong. But thank you for your comments, Anonymous. But with all that said, right, <clears throat> two things. One, not exactly related to Holton Wise, could be applied to everybody. The sheer size of the portfolio. The more business you do, the more problems you're going to have, right? If you got 10% of problems, right, like say, you, like let's just say 10% of your tenants are problem tenants, folks. If you got 100 tenants, that means you're going to have 10 problem tenants. If you got 1,000 tenants, you're going to have 100 problem tenants. If you have 10,000 tenants, you're going to have 1,000 problem tenants. You understand how math works, right? Yeah, good. We're all on the same page there. So sheer size of the portfolio, number uno. Number two, we actually inherit these issues and then we correct them that's how the business makes money the large majority of all these problems are tenants not screened by holding wise and you know what let me give you all a little quick tip here you know the number one reason uh tenants actually get evicted and and, and like take it all the way to court when they don't pay rent and stuff they do that folks uh because they don't actually really believe that the landlord will evict them. You get the tenants who think the landlord's scared uh, and they won't go through the money and the process and the time to go to court. And you know what? That's actually not like entirely stupid and false for the tenants to believe that because uh, there just are 
landlords and, and people in this business out there who actually are afraid to do that and won't do that. I mean, I know evictions are scary, right? I remember my first eviction. Uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a little scary. Steve, why don't we show them some of it? And let's face it, nobody loves uh, what we're doing today. But today we are heading to an eviction, uh, a real live eviction during the actual process. We are at the house. We just pulled up to the house. I got my crew out there. That's John. And then we got all the, the court appointed movers are all here. That is a bailiff right there. We have another bailiff up there. This Escalade uh, right there is actually the tenant who is currently being evicted. Uh, she's kind of just running around screaming, wanting to know where the landlord is. Remember, this person has known that this has been coming for seven months. This person has been stealing from the owner of this property for seven months now. You gotta walk before you could run, right? So I got through that and now evictions are, are no issue. But folks, if you're out there, right? <clears throat> There's some of you who are afraid to do evictions, and you, you let it string on and on. Like, oh, the, the tenant, he said he couldn't pay this month. He'll pay next month, and then next month comes, they don't pay. And you keep stretching it out, and they're just stringing you on. They're stringing you on. They're stringing you on. And that's how you end up like five, six, seven months behind on rent because you thought your tenant was going to make it up, and they're never doing it. They're just playing you. They're playing you like a fiddle. Professional tenants, they can see this. They can sniff your fear, and they do that to you. And that's how you end up with a large majority of these non-payment issues, right? Because the tenants just know it takes forever, right? The court process takes some time, and they know they could string some of y'all on because a lot of you, you got bleeding heart disease, right? You're thinking they're going to make right, but they fucking won't. That's why you need to continue to watch the Holton Wise, uh, Holton Wise, sphere of shows, right? Tenants from Hell, MLS Search and Analysis, uh, Ask James Wise, right? Uh, because we really try to break it down for you. We show you this bad stuff on the Tenants from Hell show so you understand, yeah, no, they, they are really bad sometimes, right? So with that said, <clears throat> uh, the biggest thing, when tenants know they can play you uh, and they can play on your emotions and make you not evict them, they will. Likewise, when Holton Wise screens tenants, they know we're going to evict them if they don't pay rent, folks. Not only are we going to evict them, we're going to send a fucking camera crew to the eviction, shove a goddamn camera in their face while we have an entire crew of people taking everything they own and throwing that fucking shit in the street. Well, not the street, the tree lawn or the devil's strip, as some of you call it. Me, personally, I thought the devil strip was when a lady, you know, she just gets to, like, the runway. But, hey, I don't know. Some of y'all call it the devil strip. But that's what we do, right? So people know Holt and Wise, right? You don't pay rent. You're evicted, motherfucker. I don't give a shit what your story is. You don't pay rent. You get evicted from Holt and Wise. We've had millions of views uh, of live evictions. So <clears throat> do you think tenants... Actively try not paying rent to Holton Wise? No, because they know they're going to get evicted, right? They they know it. So they try to target landlords who don't do the proper tenant screening and uh, who they think they can get one over on. Not the case with, tenant, uh, with Holton Wise, and there's no better way to prove that than by literally having millions of people watch you throw some fucking deadbeat motherfucker shit on the street or the tree lawn or the devil strip. You know, not the well-tidied lady parts, but, like, that portion of the grass that is between the actual yard, the sidewalk, and then the street. Anyway, so, number oh, no. Sheer size of the portfolio. Number two, uh, we're actually taking on inherited problems, inherited tenants as a business model, and then our job is to correct the ship, whether that's for the previous owner, uh, for ourselves as we made an acquisition, or for new investors who want to get in on the game, who want to do better than turnkey, who want to buy stuff with equity, and we solve those problems on their behalf. Things like the burst strategy, folks. Buy, rent, renovate, no. Buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat. It would be really hard to rent it before you're renovate it. That, that wouldn't make any sense, right? And then finally, the last thing, and this isn't as applicable to Holton Wise itself as a business, uh, but to all of you out there, whether you're investing in the Cleveland market where Holton Wise is or you're investing in your own home markets, it's going to be the type of asset you invest in that is going to determine 
the tenant base you deal with, okay? I have the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods. I'll link to it below. I've graded all the neighborhoods in the Cleveland market on an A to F scale, right? So you take your A neighborhoods. These are neighborhoods where uh, median incomes are high, right? Up in the $100,000 range. Uh, ownership to rentals, right? You're probably like 90 plus percent of the people, if not almost all of them, are homeowners, not tenants, right? Very expensive, things of that nature, right? If you have a rental property in that area, the type of tenant base you're going to get is uh, going to be far less likely uh, to give you issues than if you're in a different grade, right? Like a C grade or a D or an F, right? F is obviously going to be the highest risk area, right? So it doesn't matter uh, in the grand scheme of things, like how great you are as a property manager. You need to understand it's the asset that is going to help determine your tenant base, right? And then from there, you need to pick the best tenant out of your tenant base. But guess what? It doesn't matter if you got the greatest F grade property ever, you could take a property in the middle of an F class neighborhood and you could make the rent a third of what it should be and you could deck the property out. You could put a fucking gold toilet in that some bitch if you want. You're not going to get a person who wants to live in an A grade neighborhood, makes $100,000 a year, uh, can afford to live in a $600,000 house, drives, you know, an $85,000 SUV is paying for their kids to go to college. You're not going to convince that person to live in like a $40,000 duplex, even if it's got a gold toilet, folks. Like it's just not going to happen. So you're going to be limited to the people uh, that are going to be in that particular tenant base, right? So the quality of the neighborhood and the asset itself is going to be a big thing uh, in regards to the types of tenant bases you're going to get. So as you guys are choosing to buy properties, you need to understand no matter what, the higher risk properties, the lower cost of properties, the higher price to rent ratios you get, it's all like that because of the inherent risk of that tenant base. And you by proxy will, of course, be dealing with more problem tenants. That is part uh, of the business. That's why uh, when I talk to investors who are new to the Cleveland market and they see properties in some neighborhoods, right, like a C-grade neighborhood, they'll be like, hey, here's a duplex that rents for $1,800 and it's priced at $120,000. I'm like, yeah, this is what I think. You should probably try to buy that. And then they'll see something else on Zillow, and they'll be like, oh, well, what about this one? It's uh, over here in this neighborhood, which would be like an F-grade neighborhood. It also rents for $1,800, but it's priced at only forty. Clearly, it's a way better deal, right? Same amount of rent, a third of the price. And then I have to explain to them how this business really works, and I have to show them uh, what's really going on. And guess what? That's where the tenants from hell show. Things like that come into play, and they get to see uh, all the things that could go wrong. And then they understand if I buy the $40,000 one for the same rent as the $120,000 one, I'm buying risk. And that is risk that we show and highlight on the tenants from hell show, folks, because guess what? That's what we do here on Holton Wise TV. We provide investors out there near and far with all of the information they need on what this business is really like so they can make informed buying decisions. And in conclusion, Anonymous, great questions, but you're a prick. Claire, please experiment, right? Maybe we could do something a little different than, you know, meatloaf with ketchup one time. Like, you know, throw some seasoning on there once in a while, number one. Number two, there are other positions. Give them a go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.